Hi all, it's been a while since uh, I last posted. I'm coming back to you with this video on how to paint the Scion Regiment known as the Landon Lions. Now I'm very attracted to sort of the strong punchy colour schemes as I think they look very good over armies and also draw a lot of attention in. Without further ado, let's uh, show you how it's done. Here's the subject we'll be painting today. This is going to be one of my uh, HQs for the army. Probably the minor one, I've already painted the other one up who's got a nice nice juicy power fist. What you want to do is start with base coating it or undercoating it with Mephiston Red. That's if you don't have access to things like airbrushes. Uh, I'd recommend if you do have access to an airbrush, instead spraying it black, then spraying it with Mephiston Red, leaving a little bit of the black towards the bottom, as uh, you can see here, and then giving it a little xenophil from the top of Evil Sun's Scarlet. But as I said, this entire process will work just the same using a spray can of Mephiston Red. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is grab a brush around the size of the medium layer. You can use other brands, so Army Paint and Regiment brush is a very solid one as well for getting base coats down. And the first thing we want to do is base coat the, the fatigues. So I'm using Citadel's Corvus Black here. Uh, I think Vallejo has other good alternatives as well, such as I believe like one of the German black colours. But either way, uh, I find Corvus Black and uh, a lot of the Citadel colours absolutely suitable for this job. So you want to just begin them in here. You don't want to get too thick whilst painting it. So as it's drying, leave it alone and come back to it if you've not got a solid, solid base coat. And the reason I do this first is because these areas are going to be quite hard to reach later on once you've done all your, your highlights and other punchy colours on the model. Uh, on top of that, they're also one of the easier colours to fix should you get paint on it and make a mistake at another point. Uh, so I'm just sort of showing you roughly where the colour placement uh, would be on the model. So like the very bottoms of these, uh, just under these sort of uh, boot, boot wraps, boot clips, whatever they're called. And then sort of in between here as well. I personally leave the, uh, the berries red. So with that in mind, I'll come back to you just in a moment. As you can see, there's the Corvus Black down, nice solid base coats there. As you can see, I've made a few mistakes, such as hitting those uh, those straps there. But don't worry too much because this is part of why we do it first. It's because this next step now is to cover any of the leather areas, such as the boot covers, uh, the straps, the pouches in Mornfang Brown. Now, personally, because I've painted about 60 of these now in this scheme, I would probably opt for going for a darker brown with a little bit better coverage, maybe Dryad Bark, Rhinox Hide, and then highlighting up with Mornfang. Uh, but because I'm keeping it consistent across an army, we are going to be doing uh, the, the Mornfang brown for all the straps and leather parts of the model, or at least bits that are, I've decided are going to be leather anyway. So yeah, so that's why we're not too bothered about hitting the straps because we're just covering over them now anyway at this stage. As I said we're trying to we're trying to trying to paint an army very nicely here. We're not trying to win any single figure painting contests with this dude. So you know that that's there. Then we come down to the boots. What I tend to do here is just get both of these bits in one. Uh, I don't worry too much about the detail separation because when we apply the wash that will do some of the separation for us. So yeah, that's what we need. So make sure you get the boots like that, the boot covers, sorry. Just making sure you can see that nice and clearly. Uh, what other areas, so these, these straps along the arm, obviously don't worry too much about getting them if you've built the models fully. So like I'm not gonna get the inside of that arm because you're never gonna see it. Uh, this thing here, this looks leathery to me. So we'll paint that bad boy in along with these straps. I avoid the buckles because I will be doing them another colour in a moment. Right, anyway, let me uh, get back to you in just a moment. Here we are with the finished backpack. Well, I say finished, the base coated. It's far from far from finished, getting optimistic. Uh, now, the sl slightly sharper brush, I'm going to come in and black out details that I want to be metallic or black later on. So these screens, for example, they're going to get blacked out. 
with these it does help to be a bit neater hence why I've switched to a size one brush with a bit of a sharper point it's older now so the points a little bit gone but yeah we just want to fill that in once again let it dry though because you don't want to keep moving paint out whilst it's drying because that's what leads to it getting absolutely messed up i think this is actually meant to be the medics uh sort of weapon of choice uh, from the command squad but i've used it because i didn't just want all my basic commanders to just have the chainsaw themselves but I feel like this is representative enough of Imperial Guardsman's Chainsword or Astro Militarum Chainsword. And for some reason we've got a really nasty looking texture there so I'm just going to actually smooth that out because I do not want it drying like that. Uh, I have no idea what's caused that. It's probably me not following my own advice and uh, moving the paint about whilst it was still drying. Do a swatch for you. Um, I'm probably going to do this entire stick here black including this down here. So I want to leave the stick mainly black with um, obviously that bit at the bottom being metallic and probably the skull uh, being a bony colour. Other things, I'll leave these because although they're going metallic they're not going um, a steel colour, they're going a gold colour in a moment. Uh, so that, this aerial. And then some of the more minor details where I know the metallic is going to cover well such as these clips and this uh, this this skull uh, I'll, I'll just leave like that because the metallic will cover that just just uh, just fine uh, the grenades however will will need blacking out painting through the camera is uh, pretty hard right I'm gonna get that blocked in properly and be back to you now with those details blacked out we're gonna move on to the metallic stage I'm just using retributor gold here and I like to use this for all the trims on these guys quite carefully it's a bit more difficult to uh, paint in in front of a camera but that's the first world problem right so you get the point here on the trim you just follow the pattern around down here as well with that and obviously on the shoulders here i'd say take your time with this otherwise you make mistakes like that but don't worry too much about it that can uh, i'll go back and fix that with a little bit of a uh, mephisto red in a bit no point stressing about it. The paint's on, it's one inch to dry, it's in its happy place, might not be in mind. Uh, I'd probably advise using a brush probably a little bit more accurate with a bit of a sharper point than the one I'm using. Right, once again, I'm going to come back with that at its finished step. So carrying on with the theme, we're now going in with Iron Hands Steel. Uh, I just find this is a really nice uh, metallic paint from GW, really, really nice cap coverage. We're going to paint in the areas we obviously want to be silver. Now don't worry about it being too bright because when we wash it down it's really not going to be even even after the highlight. So uh, with the guns and that it's quite important to note that although we're painting black areas metallic we're not painting all black areas uh, metallic because some areas are staying black for, for example this gun I want this casing here to remain black so it's really up to you when you're you're painting your own ones to decide how much of the gun you want to be metallic and other, other elements um, such as backpacks and stuff like that but I think I just like to pick out these little bits here just break the gun up a little bit so these little sort of bolts sticking out and I think we'll try and do this back bit here uh, so we'll paint all of all of this up here including including the lens that's more just for sake of ease because it's going to take me longer to try and paint around it but we will go back it's important on this lens to go back and paint it paint the lens itself black right so I'll carry on doing this and be back in a moment so at this point all our base coats are complete. A little 360 there, so you can see where I've placed colours. Uh, I've not done the face because I am not a fan of washing faces. So this is where the entire model, and I mean everywhere, will now get covered in Agrax Earthshade. Now this will dull the mod, dull the colours down 
a lot, but that's okay because it's part of how we get the, the red looking so punchy on the finished model that I showed you at the start. It also helps with separation of detail. Uh, when always using washes, of course, always uh, f make sure nothing is pulling disgustingly anywhere. Uh, and also the reason I'm using Agrax on the metallics is because it gives them a more worn uh, battered look whilst actually giving them a bit more colour. Because um, although no known oil is good, has its have it has its purposes. I, I tend to defer to Agrax, even cover this scully boy, but we'll try and keep it quite uh, quite thin on him. I tend to also wash the, wash all the uh, the blacks as well. You don't need to, but I like to. So boots are a nice key area that you want to get get covered to get those get that separate separation of all the straps. Okay, with the wash uh, now dried you can see how much darker the entire model is but you can also see where it's really it's helped separate some of those details from that originally entirely red base coat. So now is the really important step which is you're getting your Evil Sun Scarlet and you don't want this to be very thick because this is the step that can take a little bit but it's ultimately what makes the entire model pop. So what you want to be doing is taking your brush and covering these panels again. But it's very important that you just do one pass and keep the paint thin and let it dry. So you may or may not be able to see that that's a bit patchy, but that's fine because you're going to have to do a few coats pretty much everywhere. Now do not rush this stage, I can't stress this enough. If you rush this stage and try and put thicker coats on and do it quicker, it will look dodgy. I guarantee you that. So just make sure you've got plen plenty, of, plenty of water involved and you just paint these elements. You want to move the paint in just one direction, you don't want to be going all over the place like a drunk, angry toddler. See these elements. Also, you can decide as you go on how much you want to build it up in each direction. So if you want to be really fancy with it, you can leave darker and light parts. Now, what I tend to do here with the chest is focus more on these upper panels using this natural line and to create uh, a divide between the two. So you'll have the lighter upper body and the darker lower body. And it'll look like you've done more work than you have. Immediately you can see there uh, what I'm talking about. Obviously it's going to take a few more coats to build that up properly. As I said, this is where you're going to be spending your time. It's a step that you want to be quite neat on because you don't want to be going back and correcting loads and loads of mistakes. Uh, I'm going to be probably making more mistakes than normal, but that's fine. Uh, because as I've said, it's quite difficult trying to keep this, <laughs> keep him in focus and paint through paint through a uh, paint through a camera with my bootleg set up. There we go. And we're going to paint this in as well. So I don't do it all the way up because you want that sort of darker, that darker red. You can see it there between the gold and the red I've just layered. You want that darker red uh, between to create a nice separation between the details. So that just reads quite nicely when uh, you're viewing the model. I'm going to revisit this knee pad now it's dried. Obviously I'm a bit all over the place right now. Usually I do everything and then we come back and continue just going around building up the colours. But obviously a video can only be so long and you don't want to sit there through 15 minutes and be building this colour up. But hopefully you can see now that's really beginning to come in strong. I can't stress enough that this is the step 
which if you do nothing else after this, this is the step you want to do. Because this will at least give you still a very punchy looking scheme. A very strong red. Almost juicy. So with that in mind, I will do this and come back once it's all dried. Got the red mainly built back up. It's a pretty strong colour now. But uh, to further, well, to be fair, at this point, if you really wanted to, if you were just trying to get an army on the tabletop, you could stop here. Obviously, I'd do a bit more to the face. I've just based, uh, base coated that in a Katachan flesh because I'm going to be working on some darker skin tones on, on this model. Uh, however, what we're going to do is push the armor more and push some of the other details. So, starting with the armor, we are going to go in edge highlighting it with Wild Rider Red. And for those of you who don't know, edge highlighting is you're looking for these these lines here, and you're literally just wanting to get your paint color and run your brush along that edge. like so. You can use the side of the brush if you've got a nice sharp line like that rather than the tip all the time. This uh, I'm using a size size zero Winsor & Newton series 7 brush here. I find you have to quite often go back and back to your back to your paint because they don't hold paint the best but what they do do amazingly is they hold the tip so I find they uh, hold the tip really well and I think that's worth it for just having to go back to the paint a bit more than a fatter, a fatter bellied brush. But yeah, so you want to follow all those edges because that's really what's going to gonna make the model really pop out a bit more. As standard for the army I'm working on, this army's all got um, two, two edge highlights on the most prominent details. So you know you've got this nice line down the down the knee pad, and then it's following that same line all the way around each knee pad as well. And in terms of miniature painting on a whole, I mean Edge Highland is very games workshop. It's not a very natural way of painting. As you know, the edges of things aren't always brighter, it just depends where the light's actually hitting them. If you were wanting to do use edge highlighting in a more realistic style paint job, uh, choose where your light's coming from. So you might decide, I'll have the lights coming from the top, then you'd edge highlight things uh, on the top a bit more to be the tops of these pads, not the bottoms. There's a step that really helps your army stand apart. It is a lot of extra effort at over 60 infantry or more. It really, it does, I mean, the hours do do add up, but this isn't meant to be a short process. To me, this is meant to be something that, you know, takes time. And that's the best bit. You get to look at your army as a whole. You get to see it all assembled together. And that's when you're like, yeah, this was, a, <laughs> this was worth the hours put in. Uh, I covered earlier in the video about, it depends what your goal is with painting. Now with painting, if you just want to play the game, you're not actually too bothered about having a nice, um, I say a nice looking army, you're not bothered about having like an amazing army that's going to win any painting awards. It's it's painted, it's clear what it is, uh, and, it's, and it's ready to go. I mean, that's absolutely fine because people have different responsibilities. They have different amounts of times they can commit to painting and commit to hobbying in general. Really what it comes down to is knowing how to do the most of the time you have allocated to your army. I tend to uh, just paint. I enjoy the process and I enjoy the challenge of getting through that hard slog. You can already see there that's popping out and hit that beret as well. I want to put the second highlight on the beret. I found with my other characters I painted that it looks a bit too bright or a bit too over the top um, but don't worry there'll be a step at the end where we do do some glazing 
don't don't be scared of uh, the term glazing. It's literally we're dragging a darker red over over certain elements of the armor to tie the highlights in and make them all blurred, uh, blend together a lot better. You can see the difference because that's obviously the unhighlighted back and then to the front. These colors are popping a bit more. I'm going to put a bit more on this uh, mess up this arm over here, I think, just to push it a bit further. But I will return once that highlight is done. Right, I'm going to put a second highlight on this. Uh, this is just going to be focusing on the sharpest uh, corners and edges. Now, all I've done is taken Wild Rider and added some white to it. Now, it takes a little bit of playing about with because it comes out quite quite like a peach colour, almost like a pink. But obviously, because you're adding white in, it can get a little bit thick, so you need to make sure that mix is really toned down. So, like, what you want to do is focus on the sharp corners with this. So like that, that there. And I tend to do like just the tops of the knee pads, like that. Then the very corners of the boots. And once again, this does look very extreme, but the glazing at the end helps tie it all back together. I'm very gentle with it because you don't want thick highlights with this. So it looks uh, bright enough already without having really thick highlights of it. I want to just reinforce this this line on the chest. Just want a tiny, tiny amount. Towards the centre. And although it's not uh, a corner, I'd like to do just a little bit there to help sell it a bit more. Corners of these elbow guards as well. And the very tips. The knuckles on these fingers. There as well. And that one line there, I think quite an important edge highlight to get right. Because later on when you do the screens, it's really gonna help sell the effect. Whilst also separating the details. One last one just over here. There we go. As I said, it's very strong, uh, but I'm going to finish the rest of the model. And we're back again, and we could push the armor highlights further, and I probably will off camera because it's a character. But for now, uh, I want to show you just what I've been doing with the rest of the armor. So now we're going to move on to the black details and highlight them. Uh, on the other models, so with the hotshot las guns and the special weaponry, I think there's a lot more to highlight at this stage. We've only really got the pistol and the rod. So with that in mind, I'm taking Mechanica Standard Grey. Small brush again, and we are just edge highlighting. That one's a bit thick. Now if you do mess up on these edge highlights a little bit, it's not the end of the world, just carry on doing it. And then you can go back in with black at the end to tighten the line up. I think the key to a good, a good edge highlight is not having loads of line wobble all over the place. See, I've got a bit there myself, but it doesn't matter. So I always tend to do a tidy up stage at the very end anyway. No. 
So I think you're getting the idea. So I'll be back in a moment. So okay, at this point, I've uh, done the done the highlights on the on the black, but not the not the fatigues, as in the black opposed to the corvus black. So that's with a um, initial highlight of mechanical standard grey. But off camera, I've also done the same thing I've done to the armor, but uh, with administratum grey. To those higher points, uh, I'll probably go thin thin it down on the uh, staff or the command rod in a bit. I'm happy enough with it on the gun, as it were. Okay, the next thing to highlight, and it's probably the most tedious part of the process, is the all the uh, all the leather straps. Now, I tend to only do one highlight on these because they're very small, and I think one highlight sells them enough. Uh, so I'm probably just going to do a few on camera, and then I'll do the rest off because they're, they're very small. It's, uh, I need to usually concentrate quite a lot to get a nice line. But if you do mess the line up. It's not the end of the world because once again you can just go in with your brush narrow and go down the middle with the Morn Fan colour. That should tidy up any edge highlight issues you have. I think these, this uh, element could be pushed more on the model. I uh, personally think across an army it's enough, but that's down to personal choice. If you did want to push it further, I'd probably go up to Deathclaw Brown as the next one, or maybe add a tiny bit of white to Scrag Brown. For the lenses, these are the three colours you need. You need Caliban Green, Warpstone Glow, and the very sickly Moot Green. Now you want to keep these paints quite thin. I'll try and get this as close up as possible. So first of all, as I said, we need to return to this lens here and start by painting the black back in. The first colour, which is Caliban Green. And what you want to do, so you don't want to paint the whole lens. You want to leave this top, the top strip and leave it black. So you're painting probably about Two thirds of the lens, this Caliban green, and you're leaving the top, the top black. I don't have the best camera in the world. I do apologise, but uh, you just have to take my word for it, that sort of top sliver, almost like a half moon that I've left black. And same thing again with Warpstone Glow, which you're maybe painting the bottom third or bottom half. So it's very important to have a very small fine brush. And then moot green. Now this is literally going to be almost like an edge highlight on the bottom, the bottom left of the lens. Might take a few little passes just to get get it built up correctly. Kind of see I've got that little line, yeah. And annoyingly, I keep uh, keep overdoing it. What I'm doing here with the black, just reinforcing the edge. Where I might have overspilled a bit. Also, for no particular reason, I decided to do his uh, do his helmet as well. The little, I'm not really sure what it is, but I've decided to paint it like a lens to help sell the effect. So now, what you want to do is try and put a white dot up in that um, black area. So one dot there, and 
one dot on the mid green. And there you have a lens. And the same up here. Uh, the last thing I want to show you is the screens. So this little screen here. So it's done with the exact same greens, but you want to make sure the each layer is very thin. And then I tend to drag it to the top right. So try to do those two little dots as well. It's very thin so it dries very quick. Same again on the reverse. Now warp zone glow. And kind of in a similar way to the lens, keeping it thin but trying to leave a bit of the darker colour in the corner. You can see that's very watery so I'm just going to have to so sort of wipe the brush off and then push that back up and leave it. So I'll take a few coats of each colour to get it right. Maybe two or three. So when you're on the moot green, you kind of want to focus it on the top. Kind of just doing that kind of shape. Like an L shape. So I just want to feather it up a bit. I mean you can put a lot more effort in on these screens. I'm about to finish round this video off by showing you exactly that. I'm taking a little, little bit of the white, a little bit of the moot green, mixing them together. I tend to go to one of these, turn them that way. Won't be my neatest one. In fact, it's turning into probably one of my worst ones. What I'm trying to do is sort of do a vitals. Try and show that it's a screen showing his vitals. Yeah, sadly you get you get the idea. Um, it's really messy though, so tidy it up a bit. The thing we do is take some black and try and align the panel. But in short, there we have it. So the last step. To making it to making it look good, so you want to take the fist and red, and just water it down mental amounts. So consistency wise, like that, that's how much you want to water it down. Uh, now we're going to take it and we're going to literally paint it over all the panels of red. What this will do is knock back all the highlights and tie it all in together. Now you might be turning around going, well actually I quite like how punchy the highlights are, even though they go quite peach. Then that's up to you, feel free to keep it that way. I mean this is how I do it. I fully expect anyone that watches one of these videos to take away what they want from the video and adapt it. Uh, to their own style and methods. Just put it over there. 
I mean, this is like a translucent layer. Uh, so we get all over that berry. You can see now, especially on this arm, those highlights have been knocked so far back. It's really more red than that peachy color now. There's an example. So that's how it was before in the backpack. And that's how it is now. I'm going to close it out here. Now for the face, I'm happy to do a tutorial on how I do uh, darker skin tones. But it's one I'm going to have to do off camera at the minute because this camera isn't quite good enough to really pick it up. And certainly I'm having to work around the camera. You see I keep, kept knocking it. It's not the most... Uh, so I'd say it's the most professional, high quality video going on there, on the YouTube selection right now. But it's certainly something I can can do in future, or if you request it, I can uh, I can try and do it. Uh, on top of that, there's other elements of the model that I'll I'll finish off camera. Uh, things I suggest you can highlight the gold if you want with Stormpost Silver. Same with the uh, the metallics. Depends what you want to do, and I wanted to show you how I do the uh, the rank and file. In short, here's the, here's the basics. Do with them as you see fit. If you did make it all the way to the end, uh, thank you very much for for struggling struggling through. It's a heroic effort on your part. But all the uh, all the usual. If you do fancy it and do want to see these things in future, obviously you're gonna need to subscribe to uh, to see that. Thanks for watching and I hope you found this useful.